Warning: Daring to play the games listed here may result in screams of terror and cause nightmares. Hello again my fellow gamers, my name is Manda McKnight and I am back for a limited time only to be your host for this list. Just kidding, I'll be back every now and then, popping up like a good jump scare. Which makes sense, as I am known for being the most terrifying. Boo! 2020 is just around the corner and in honor of that we'll be taking a look at some of the scariest games from the past decade. The good old 2010s as we count down the top 10 scariest video games of the decade. Still sounds weird to say the 2010s, it's not as satisfying as the 90s or the 80s. The 2010s. Hmm. One day in the distant future they'll probably just be known as the 10s or like the two 10s and I'll either be long dead or be a version of my consciousness uploaded into an android who still hosts YouTube videos. Stay tuned to find out which. And if you like horror games be sure to give this video a little like. Alright let's get counting. Number 10, Blair Witch. Developed by Team Bloober, this psychological survival horror game takes you back to the 90s. You are forced to visit the same woods as the teenagers in the fateful Blair Witch Project film as you search for a missing boy. You play as a former police officer, Ellis Lynch, armed with a cell phone, a flashlight that works some of the time, and a reliable walkie talkie. You set out with your trusty animal companion and tracker dog, Bullet. You can even pet him! I know that's not what this list is about. But also, I know that's not what this list is about, but also dogs in the games are just the best. Right? They're just the best. And the bond you share with your dog both lulls you into a false sense of security and helps to urge you forward as you explore the creepy forest and later a creepy abandoned house. The game also incorporates a camcorder, evoking the original film it is inspired off of, which you later use as a tool to explore the world even further. Blair Witch was released in August of 2019 and is playable on Xbox One, PS4, and PC. Number 9. Layers of Fear in Layers of Fear, you are a painter who has returned home after a court hearing to start work on your magnum opus, a painter's masterpiece work. The game is a psychological horror game where your character's own psyche is your own worst enemy. You wander through your home experiencing hallucinations and uncovering more and more about your character's twisted past and broken mental state. The game also implores a few jump scares to really freak you out. Especially because of the build up. The build up! Lots of walking down dark corridors in this game. Gameplay centers around exploration and puzzle solving. Layers of Fear has been spooking out players since its release in 2016. It was also developed by the Bloober team and is playable on Nintendo Switch, PS4, PC, and Xbox One. Number 8, Dead Space 2. Dead Space was published by EA Games, the sequel to the first Dead Space. The game is played in third person and was released in 2011. It is playable on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. Once again, you are taking on the Necromorphs. Dead Space is interesting as it is a game that could be best described as a slasher. In fact, you are encouraged to slice off the limbs of the necromorphs that attack you as headshots are often not useful. And you know the game you're playing is going to be gory, like in Dead Space 2 when you are rewarded for curb stomping monsters heads. And also if it scares your mom. If your mom is scared, you should probably play it, am I right? The game itself leaves you feeling tense and panic ridden as you often fight in dimly lit narrow corridors and tight spaces. Mm, creepy, creepy. Monsters coming at you so fast. Number 7, Soma. Soma was released in 2015 by Frictional Games and is playable on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. In it, you are Simon Jarrett, the survivor of a car accident who is looking for help after suffering severe brain damage. Although you don't really seem that brain damaged, but it's fine. David Munchie, a medical grad student, offers to help you by observing the trauma with an experimental brain scan procedure. Oh, yeah, he's obviously not a doctor yet, he's a med student, so you know. You know something bad's about to happen. <laughs> you pass out during the procedure and appear to wake up in the future after humanity has been pretty much destroyed after a large comet struck the earth. You are on Pathos 2, an underwater research facility, and work to uncover what has happened both in this place and to yourself. The game is a heavily narrative focused game filled with puzzles and sneaking. This game evokes the genre of psychological horror even more as each shadowy figure is meant to symbolize some kind of emotional trauma. And if you're wondering what Soma means by the way, it's basically a word meaning um, the soul, the spirit, and the memories of one's body. In fact, there's also a part in that game where you are likening the scan of your brain to having your soul captured in a photograph. Number 6, Alan Wake. 
Alan Wake was first released in 2010 and is playable on Xbox and PC. It's a game that evokes a Twin Peaks or Twilight Zone vibe. You play as Alan Wake, a writer who ends up getting trapped in his own story. The game constantly makes the player question what is real and what is illusion, as they explore the frighteningly surreal and eerie environment of the town Bright Falls in Washington State. Something that has always gotten me is how when you're running away from your enemies, you can still hear them just chasing you behind you. You just hear footsteps. Ugh. Like, don't get me, don't catch me, ah! The jump scares and memorable characters make this psychological thriller meets action packed video game one of the creepiest creeps to creep about in. Creepy, creep, creepy, creeper. Creeps. Number 5 Amnesia The Dark Descent This first person survivor horror game filled with monsters and puzzles was released in 2010 by Frictional Games. Though truly it was more psychological than survival based really. In fact, this might be one of the first huge psychological horror games. This game is playable on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. Amnesia was a brilliant game when it was released because it tricked you into doing the work for it. Almost. The most terrifying thing in Amnesia isn't actually what you're running from, it's kind of your imagination. This is a game where you run from monsters, barricade doors, hide in a closet, and let your imagination go to work. The sound design is also great, and the main character's breathing specifically really, really terrifies me. Because you can lose your sanity in the game, you also become more terrified. The brilliant thing is there is no in-game negative consequences really for losing sanity. The game makes you think there is, but th there really isn't. Your vision might change, you might fall down, but that's kind of it. What the game does is it gifts you with the horror of paranoia, more akin to what it is probably actually like to feel like you're going insane in a horrifying scenario. And you know a game is frightening when you can specifically just lean out your head to peek around corners in it. Like you can just do that. <laughs> Number 4 Alien Isolation Alien Isolation was released in 2014 and was published by Sega. The game is playable on PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch. It's a first person survival horror game where you are Amanda Ripley, Amanda, Ellen's daughter. The game takes place about 15 years after the original Alien film. You are setting out to retrieve one of the last recordings of your mother's voice after finding out it may still exist at a remote space station. The only problem is, once you are there, you must battle enemies in the form of fellow humans humans, androids, and one near undefeatable foe, an alien. As you cannot kill the alien on your own, you are focused to play a never ending tension fueled game of hide and seek with it, and no matter how many times it catches and kills you, it still remains terrifying when it does. As promised, the game often leaves you feeling isolated in your journey despite running into others on the ship. As promised, the game often leaves you feeling isolated in your journey despite running into others on the ship, many of whom you are forced to actually watch die as fellow prey of the aliens. Or they just don't really want to help you. Number 3 Silent Hill 2 This game became iconic and its tropes have been borrowed, used, and recycled in so many other games in honor of how terrifying it is. And first was when it was released in 2001. You play as the main character who has received a letter from his wife. The only problem is his wife is supposed to be dead, so of course you set out to solve the mystery, hopeful that you will find your wife who you suspect may still be alive. The game was published by Konami and designed by the famous Team Silent. These graphics may be a little dated now, but the game still stands as one of the greatest horror games from the last decade and one of the most frightening at the time of its release. It's still pretty frightening to be honest. I think. Digital like pixelated sharks still scare me in Tomb Raider so maybe I'm a bad judge. Old school blocky Tomb Raider. Number 2 Five Nights at Freddy's you have just started at the late night security guard. You have just started as the late night security guard at Freddy Fazbear's Pizzeria. You are tasked with making sure no one breaks in and trying to survive the night. Survive the night as the animatronic puppets come alive and attempt to kill you. What makes this scenario even more frightening is the fact that you really have no way to defend yourself. The best you can do is blockade doors, run away, and you know, close the doors of the room that you're in. <laughs> the game is filled with tons of jump scares and while the premise may feel a little silly, it is not a horror game to be underestimated. The original FNAF was released in 2014 and the latest game in the franchise just came out this year for VR called FNAF Help Wanted. The original is playable on PS4 and PC. Number 1 PT you probably knew this was coming. Probably one of the scariest games that you will likely never get to play. This game was designed by Hideo Kojima, 
in collaboration with Guillermo del Toro and was set to be published by Konami Studios. PT stands for Playable Teaser, and all we ever got to see of it was a 30 minute demo. And only those who downloaded the demo before the project was cancelled even really got to play it. It's also free. It was free and it's so good. In the game, you are basically stuck walking the same hallway, just stuck in this loop. And it is this repetition combined with the simple yet detailed game design that makes it so terrifying and brilliant. It's basically like watching a horror film, except from a first person perspective, where you are the Star, aka the person who is about to get freaked the heck out, who has no way of defending yourself against the hostile ghosts that surround you. The playable teaser was released in 2014, but when Konami and Kojima split, it was removed from Konami's listing. It was available on PS4 originally, but has since been removed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope some of these games freaked you out. If you played any of them, and they did, or even if they didn't, be sure to let us know in the comments below. I have never played PT, but just watching playthroughs of it, oh, it scares me to bits. So, yes. If you haven't seen it, please watch it or play it if you haven't, I guess. Send it to me if you have it. I want to play it. Also, let us know if even any playthroughs of these titles have had that titular effect on you and terrified you like they have me. And if there are some horror games who didn't make the cut but which you found equally terrifying, be sure to share with me in the comments. I want to add some more horror games to my list, so please suggest a way. And if you like what we do here, let us know by smashing that subscribe button. Till next time, this has been Top 10 Gaming and I'm your host Amanda McKnight reminding you to keep gaming on. Pew pew!